Thank you, Ms. Chris. I appreciate that. I was sitting there thinking that she played that. I know that was one of Dad's favorites, and I have to say it is one of my favorites. And uh, matter of fact, I told Christy uh, uh, at the appointed time uh, when it was time to conduct my service that is one of the one of the songs that I won't play or sing uh, at the, the service. Is that it is well with my soul because I want people to know that it is well with my soul. Amen. 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 Brother Frank has uh, said he's got that likewise scheduled and everything. So it's a beautiful hymn. Thank you, Miss Chris, for sharing that with us this evening. Thank you very much. Malachi chapter number three. Malachi chapter three. We'll pick up reading the verse one. We'll read down through verse number three. And then we'll try to uh, uh, get through verse number three this evening. And then we'll pick up at verse number four by the grace of God next week. But uh, this evening we want to look at verse three and what the Bible is talking about purifying and talks about the priesthood and talks about an offering to the Lord in righteousness. We've looked at those three things that's given in verse number three here this evening by the grace of God. So Malachi chapter 3, verse number 1, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller soap. And that's where we left off last week, talking about the, the Jesus Christ and his cleansing blood. And in verse number 3, the word of God tells us, And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer, and ask the Lord to bless the reading of the scriptures tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so thankful for this opportunity to be in thy house this evening, dear Lord. We're thankful for the blessings of today. We're thankful for thy faithfulness. Uh, Lord, uh, great is thy faithfulness, and Lord, we just thank you and praise you for being so gracious and faithful to each and every one of us, and Lord, we're thankful for the health and the ability to be here this evening. Lord, we're thankful for answered prayers, dear Lord. We're thankful for meeting our needs. Uh, Father, we're, that we can say that we love you tonight because you first loved us. And Heavenly Father, now as we uh, look to the bread of life tonight, Lord, I pray that you'd feed us from your word. I pray that you would strengthen the inner man and that we would learn something tonight to help us in our daily walk with thee and that uh, your people should be a, a, a peculiar or set aside or, or different people that when the world views us as your children uh, that they should see something different and that they should see Christ in us. And so, Father, may that be our heart's desire not only today but each and every day. And, Father, we pray that you continue to bless in this new year that you have given us. And, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for what you've done. We thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. For it's in Christ's name we do ask and pray these things. And amen. Notice here, verse number 3, he says, And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. If you remember, uh, past weeks gone by, we've talked about the Levitical priest, how they have... Uh, corrupted uh, the, the sacrificial system, if you will. They've uh, uh, been offering the wrong type of sacrifices. Uh, they've been doing it for the wrong reasons. And uh, the, the priests themselves have been corrupted. And so like people, like priests, like people, uh, it, it trickled down into all of Israel, if you will. And so, uh, beloved, uh, uh, there's some real problems, some real problems uh, with uh, uh, the Jewish people at this time. And beloved, uh, today we still encounter and battle the same types of problems uh, that the Jewish people uh, were dealing with and the Levitical priest. Uh, uh, today there are people that offer up sacrifices and offer up worship, uh, but uh, if it's not the right type of worship, if it's not the right type of sacrifice, if you will, God's not going to accept it, just like he didn't accept the wrong types of sacrifices and the wrong type of worship back then, it still applies today. And uh, uh, nowhere in the Bible will you find to be like the world, to win the world. Uh, uh, the Word of God tells us, as a people of God, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. We're not to be like the world. We live in the world, but we are not of the world. And so we're to be different than the world, not like the world. And today a lot of churches have let worldly worship, fleshly worship creep into the services. And listen, you can offer it all day long. And you can feel good about offering it up, just like the Levitical priest did back in the Old Testament. But that doesn't mean God is going to accept it. 
And then finally he uh, makes his heart known here as they go through and ask all these questions. Well, what, what's wrong, Lord? I mean, why are you quit blessing us? And he tells them exactly why the blessings stopped. And so uh, we left off last week in verse number two, talking about where he is like refiner's fire and where you talk about the ore and you melt down the, the ore and you get all the impurities out and you have either pure gold or pure silver. Uh, beloved, that's what happens to us spiritually when we get saved. We go through a sanctification process, a purifying process, and it starts with the heart and works its way out. The world does it the exact opposite way. It dresses up the outside, but never addresses the inside issue, you see. And, and it's a heart problem. It's an internal problem. And, uh, beloved, uh, today there's a lot of people that uh, I think the devil has gotten deceived and they think everything is okay. Listen, the devil is a liar and the father of it. And everything that God offers to humanity, the devil offers a counterfeit because he is a liar and a deceiver. You know, and the real dangerous thing is that the devil knows the truth and he'll give some truth out and mix it in with the lie so that all of it appears as true. And that's why God encourages us, commands us as children of God to study to show yourself approved unto God. Study his word. That way you can discern what is truth from a lie. Amen. And uh, beloved, uh, today... You know, uh, 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 the truth has been so much removed uh, from, from the scriptures with all these modern translations. And, and let me tell you something. At the end of the day, when you leave out, when you leave out verses and when you leave out words or you change words, it changes the meaning, it changes the context. It's just that simple. There's no other way around it. And so, uh, 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 beloved, uh, there's a great debate that's, that goes on in the world. And uh, sometimes I get in that conversation, but I, I'll, I'll say it this way. I have it settled within my own heart that the King James Bible is the inspired, infallible, and errant word of God. And that's what I cling to, that's what I read, and that's what I put my trust in because I believe that is God's preserved word for the human race. Amen. Now, we can debate that all day long and all night. And just like Paul encouraged Timothy, strife and babblings and, and old wives tales and fables, stay away from that stuff because all arguing and debating does is it creates division and we know what the Bible has to say about division. If you get the brethren divided amongst themselves, a house divided cannot stand. And when you've got brothers and sisters uh, in Christ who are truly saved and you get them debating this and that and the other and you cause division, the work of God ceases. And that's exactly what the devil wants. That's, right. that's exactly what he wants. And so uh, we get here to verse number three. And again, you see uh, some about the purification process. And he shall sit as a refiner and purify of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi. Talking about the Levitical priest. He's got to deal with the priest. Uh, to observe the sacrifices correctly, to offer the sacrifices correctly, to offer the right types of animals that God gives us in the Le Levitical law in the Old Testament. He's going to deal with them. And beloved, today you and I uh, are, are, are priests, if you will, because of our position in Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible tells us that when Jesus Christ died upon the cross, what happened to the veil that was in the temple? It was rent. It was rent. Now you and I, as a child of God, we don't have to bring an animal sacrifice. We don't have to go to a Levitical priest. You and I are spiritual priests, and we have direct access to the throne of God. I don't have to go down here and confess my sins to a man that has the title of a priest. No, I can get on my knees and come boldly to the throne of grace and find mercy and attain help in time of need. And I can bow down uh, to Jesus Christ and I can come boldly because of my and your position in Jesus Christ and pray directly to our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. And so, beloved, yes, we are priests of God, if you will. And so that's how that uh, applies to us today. But talking about uh, uh, the purification process, God wants his people to be different. Now, I'm not, I, I'm not talking about Andy Griffith, Opie Taylor different, where the teacher says he's peculiar. That's odd. No, you and I have been set apart for a specific purpose. 
a peculiar people, a sanctified people, a set-apart people. You and I, as children of God, we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. And an ambassador is one that represents another nation or another country. And you and I, as children of God, we represent the heavenly kingdom of the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. And so if you think God doesn't have a plan for you as a child of God, and God doesn't want to use you, you better think again, because if you're saved, not only are you a child of God, you're an ambassador for Jesus Christ. You represent the heavenly kingdom. Are you representing it well? Are you living in a way and representing it in a way that people want to be part of that heavenly kingdom? And so, yeah, that's a big responsibility for each and every one of us. It's not just for the preacher. It's just not for the Sunday school teacher or deacons. It's for all of us. Amen? Amen. And so, uh, beloved Titus chapter 2, verse number 14 tells us, who gave himself for us. Did you get that? He didn't, didn't do it for himself. He did it for us. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. If you don't have that underlined in your Bible, you ought to underline that. All. Not some. Not part. Not current, but all. That's good news, is it not? Amen. That he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify to himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Now, beloved, we're not saved by our good works, but bless, uh, bless God, good works ought to identify us that we have been saved and we are the people of God and that we ought to glorify the Lord in our works. Amen. Our works don't save us. Our works don't keep us. But our works identify us as a child of God. And when we do good works, guess what happens? Fruit begins to abound. Amen. And what did God command us to do? That we should go forward and bring forth much fruit. Much fruit. And so Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 and 26. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Uh, beloved, uh, the fact of the matter is, that's why it's important to read God's word, is when you read God's word, God tells you what's wrong with, with you. You're a sinner. He tells you that you need to be saved. He tells you about a Savior that tasted death for every man and died on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood for the world's sins. He tells you that if you'll put your faith and trust in His only begotten Son and what He did on the cross of Calvary and that He conquered death in the grave and resurrected the third day, if you'll put your faith and trust in Him and call upon Him and ask Him to save you, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, you can be saved. So God tells you how to get saved. And not only after you get saved, He tells you how to stay right with God. Amen. And so, yes, he tells us how to be reconciled back to him. He tells us how to live after we get saved, that we uh, would do the right and well-pleasing things in his sight to glorify him and his name for what he's done for us. Does everybody understand this? Amen. And so, uh, beloved husbands, love your wives. Jesus Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. As you go through and read the Word of God, God will reveal to you the things that are wrong in your life and things that you need to remove from your life. That is part of the cleansing and purification process. The Apostle Paul said, I would not have known this was wrong unless the what? Law told me it was wrong. And beloved, as you and I read the Word of God, God reveals His heart to us. He reveals His mind. His Word is truth. The Word of God says, Sanctify them uh, by, with truth. Thy Word is truth. And as you read the Word of God, God tells you what's right. God tells you what's wrong. There's no middle ground. And bless God, uh, He wants us to start the cleansing process. Now let me tell you something. Uh, Jesus Christ will save you just like you are. We sing that song, Just As I Am. He'll save you just like you are. You can be hired to couch. You can be drunk or stuck. If you come to the Lord with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, Holy Spirit's dealing with your heart, there's that drawing that takes place, and you say, Lord, I forgive me, I'm sorry, I want, to, I want to repent, I want to change. Lord, I call upon you, forgive me, save me. Guess what? He'll save you right then and there. Amen. Thank God for that. Right. But He's not going to come down here and clean out all the garbage that's in your heart. You've got to start doing that yourself. 
And beloved, that's why the Bible says, He must increase, but I must decrease. And we've got things that we need to empty out of our lives, and when we empty them out, it leaves a void there, and that void needs to be filled with things of God. Yes. Spiritual things, eternal things, heavenly things. And so, beloved, uh, uh, that purification process, that sanctification process, God will allow trials to come into your life to cause a purification process, a trial. Uh, uh, cleansing process. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Verse 7, don't miss this, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found in the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Sometimes God's going to test you and he's going to try your faith. And there are those that are weak in faith. And the first time there's a rippling, hey, listen, listen. When, when things are going their way and there's not a thing wrong at home and everything's going good at, on the job and the ball team's winning all the ball games, let me tell you something. Man, they're shouting praising God on the mountaintop. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But you know what? You're not going to be there all the time. You're going to have bad days at work. You're going to have difficulty with your spouse. You're going to have difficulty with children. You're going to have difficulty with your neighbor. Man, born a woman is a few days and full of trouble. And God said, you know what? I'm going, to see, I'm going to see how sincere you are. I'm going to see how true you really are. And God already knows that he's going to send a trial your way so you will know where you're at. And there are those... They can be told they got cancer. They can be told they lost their job. They can be told they lost their car. They can be told they lost their home. Praise God, hallelujah, I'm still going home to beautiful land. Yes. But you got those the first time there's a ripple in the pond. Well, oh, I don't know, my car's missing. I tell you what, I can't take this. I just ain't going to go to church. I tell you, I, I just ain't going to put up this. I, I don't know what God's got going on, but I've had a bad day at work. Car's missing. Fridge ribbon's acting up. And they give up. That's the trial of your faith. And beloved, so then faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You go through and you read the scriptures from Old Testament, New Testament. Man that is born of woman is few days and full of trouble. I've got news for you. You're not the only one that bad things happen to. Right. That should not change your view about God and what he's done for you. Amen. It should not be conditional. God loved you so much He gave His only begotten Son. If you put your faith and trust in the finished and completed work of Jesus Christ, whether you're having a good day or a bad day, you should rejoice in the fact that you've been saved. Amen. You see. So the trial of your faith. Sometimes God will allow trials to come your way to test your faith. You know what? You're not quite as strong as you think you are. You need to get more grounded and settled in the words. You need to study more. You need to read more. You need to pray more. That's why it's important to come to church. You need to be here on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. You know, I've had people come up and say, Preacher, I wish you'd preach about this, preach about that. And, and nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, I've addressed it somewhere along the way. Well, I didn't hear about it. Well, you know why you didn't hear about it? Well, you only come two times out of every six months, and you don't watch videos. Well, guess what? You don't know about it. Because you ain't reading the Bible. You ain't coming to your church. And so, beloved, uh, the trial of your faith, that's part of the purification process. And oh, by the way, if you do know, do something that you know is wrong, and you don't confess that sin and forsake it, and ask God to forgive you, God will break out that spiritual belt. We call it 